we thought about hiring other voices, and then it just started getting complicated scheduling, and it was just easier to do it myself. So anyway, I try not to think about my voice because I think I sound annoying, but whatever, I'm over it. <laughs> Don't include that part. So last week, we brought in a consultant and we realized we have a vision that extends five years. And so we need to map out what's the content we're gonna create in that time, uh, how much money we think it's gonna cost, what comes first, what comes second, prioritize, cross things off the list. It's gonna be, I don't know how it's gonna, how do you, <laughs> how do you think it's gonna go? <laughs> You're like a motivational speaker. But I know, I gotta like, I'm pumping <laughs> myself up. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. Yep. We have a lot of great projects coming. It feels a little overwhelming to me, but for John, it I fires you up. So. This is the kind of stuff that makes me. Yeah. Get you got an extra spring in your step. <laughs> We just spent a couple hours uh, brainstorming and planning the next five years of Bible projects. Yeah. It's really exciting. Uh, we're humbled. We're so uh, grateful that you guys are a part of this with us and that uh, you have a vision for this too. Yeah, because what's happened is there's been so much support from you guys monthly and one time where this turned from, hey, let's just make videos when we have the money to mm -hmm. let's map this out. Let's see how big this thing really is. Yeah. Let's see how we're gonna finish it. Mm -hmm. um, let's be ambitious, but not kill ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the goal, I mean, I, the reason we wanna work this hard, our, our big dream is to affect world Christianity's paradigm for how they think about the Bible. Yeah. And that they Think about it as a unified story leading to Jesus that shapes our whole worldview and every part of our lives. In 2018, 2019, we're thinking of something, let's say it's top secret right now, <laughs> but it's super exciting. It's gonna be awesome. It's actually the most exciting thing on the list, I think, for me. Um, and this is all really exciting. <laughs> it's awesome. Do you think you're gonna be able to do it? Or is it too ambitious? Yeah, I think, I think we'll do it. I think the thing is, is you never know you can't plan five years in advance. Yeah. Things change. I think that we're gonna look at this and we're probably gonna go, oh, wasn't that cute that that's what we thought we were gonna do? And either it's gonna be because it was way too ambitious or it wasn't ambitious enough. Like, I don't know what the answer to that is, but you gotta have a plan in motion and a target and then every year, every 16 months, you come back and you you reassess. But uh, I'm, no, I'm known to be too ambitious. Um, Tim's good counterbalance for that. Um, I like to throw myself in the deep end and try to learn how to swim, um, and it's it's a problem I have. So I'm have you ever to, have you ever drowned before? If I ever drowned, I'm still alive. <laughs> um, we on our new website, we're going to show all the posters. Um, and so we're taking photographs, so we have different bodies holding them, gotcha. so we don't have to show the same body every single time. So this is this is this is a group right below us, um, Polar, and so they've been really generous in letting us just shoot at their studio. Awesome. Hey John, why are the papers blank? <laughs> um, we're gonna Photoshop on the magic of Photoshop. Okay, check. One, two, check, check. The first dispute, the first dispute, the first, dis the first dispute, that's hard to say quickly. That is hard. The first dispute, the first dispute, the first dispute starts when God says that he still loves his covenant people, Israel, despite their failures. And Israel rudely says back, how have you shown us love? You know, I first, I write the script and I'm sketching, then I polish it and then I do the stick figures. Um, then I meet with the artist and then we go through all this in detail 
and then um, uh, the artist goes and draws the beautiful version. Um, then, yeah, so by the time I sit down to record, I've got this in my head. And every line, it's all the wording is connected and so on. Gotcha. So, yeah, as I'm speaking, I'm, I've am i got the thing in my head. Got it. Okay. Yep. Great. That, yeah. helps. that helps. Yeah. So it helps me know what words to emphasize or key, yep. you know, stuff like that. You don't have to hang out for the second take if you don't want to. Oh, you do two takes? Always do two takes. Always do two takes. Well, you just never know. Um, so we we just went through Ecclesiastes draft one, and wow. af after we finish the draft, we sit down and storyboard it with these two, and we just read through it and talked big picture. What are you guys' takeaways? How are you feeling? Wow, my big takeaway is that uh, trying to pin down like the level of darkness and if there's a, an element of like live capture anything, how to use that to the best of our ability and trying to think of how to use the style that I have in mind for Ecclesiastes to, mm. to really bring forward your points. And it definitely feels like a huge comparison to Proverbs, which we've kind of set a tone for. Um, so it, it'll be fun to be in a completely different tone and to, to use a lot of like Proverbs as a starting point, but not not where we need to stay, but like how we could build off of that in some fun ways, whether it's like, I don't know if there's like any sort of, like I don't want to like do the same kind of techniques that we had on the characters for Proverbs. I really think like having less characters, like Proverbs, Lady Wisdom, and um, Hukma and all that, like existing in Proverbs is a lot. So now that we just have three in Ecclesiastes, um, I think that we could refine those in a cool, cool way. We're not trying to be sensational in, in both in content or in the way. But the book is visuals. sort of. But it is trying to mess with you. It's trying to mess with you. So are we going to try to mess with people? Yeah, I think if we're being true to it, people should walk away so feeling if this, a little bit disturbed. If this video is successful, you'll watch it and feel a little messed with. A little uneasy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> start <laughs> best start um, what, what do we got behind us yeah hey everybody um, we have a whole bunch of stuff on our walls we ran out of space so we started hanging it <laughs> uh, what this represents is um, two days of strategic planning uh, that John and I and some others did for uh, the present and the future of the Bible project I mean, a lot of people ask us like how how much more do you have to do? And we're always kind of like, ah. Yeah, like, how far are you? Yeah. Is, is the project almost done? Yeah. Or, did, and in some sense, like, there's series with finite videos, and we know, yeah, we're about 50% through that series, but we have all these other series that we think we might want to do, and mm -hmm. who knows what else. And so we wanted to really figure out what is, what do we want to do in the next 10 years? Well, a key part was just evaluating the present impact and influence of the Bible Project, um, yeah. which has been really, surprising and fun to see and kind of a little mind-blowing um, but uh, just a couple weeks ago we hit a hundred thousand subscribers on our YouTube channel so that's a hundred thousand people who want to regularly hear and see the content um, millions and millions of views of the videos um, hundreds even thousands of churches that have adopted the videos into their Sunday school and small group curriculum and so on and we get emails and, and hear about all these stories, and we, f we have realized that there's something bigger uh, that we are one piece of that God's doing in the world. And uh, we want to focus on the future of making more videos like we have been doing already. So one thing we think God is doing is that he's helping people uh, see the Bible as a really important part of their life. And what we think our contribution to that is helping people see the Bible through this paradigm of biblical uh, theology mm -hmm. where 
you appreciate the Bible and its literary design and you understand the Bible as a story and you see how the story leads to Jesus. And that's such a freeing way to see the Bible and then mm. it just makes things, <laughs> it's falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> it makes things, uh, makes things more meaningful and it makes the Bible something relatable that you can put into your life instead of the weird thing that you think you're supposed to like but you don't really understand it and don't read those one book that in the Old Testament because yeah, yeah. it'll creep you out. Like, Instead, it's let's really appreciate the Bible. Let's have the biblical worldview become our worldview, and then things just mm -hmm. just change mm -hmm. at that point. So that's uh, the big picture of the kind of impact millions of people and uh, across the world. Um, and uh, it's so remarkable. It's possible because of just thousands of people giving ten dollars or fifteen dollars a month, or we're all just putting in a little bit and all of a sudden the impact becomes huge. So thank you guys so much for giving your support and for joining the Bible Project. You guys are making this happen, and so we're, we're honored and thrilled to be part of it. Yeah, thank you guys.